Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at general business credit. And to be more specific, within the general business credit, we're going to be looking at the rehab and work opportunity tax credit. Because there's no such thing as a general business credit. A general business credit is composed of a number of credit combined into one credit. Now, in this session, we're going to be looking at two of those credits. In the next session, we'll look at additional credits. So this topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind my viewers to connect with me on a professional level, which is on LinkedIn account, or you can connect with me via Facebook, like my Facebook page and connect with me on a personal level. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This way you are up to date. Please like my videos. If you do like them, share them, put them in playlists so other students can benefit. If you know anyone might be interested in them, email them, email them the link or inform your classmate. This is my Twitter account. And I do have a website where I organize all my lectures by course and chapter. This recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you like these sessions, please visit Jaeger CPA Review for additional hundreds of hours of video lectures with thousands of multiple choice questions. So if you're studying for your CPA or if you are an accounting student, you can supplement your courses by signing up for a Jaeger CPA review course. You will have simulation, which are exercises and problems. Those are what's covered on the CPA exam. CPA textbook, which will summarize all the uh, main topics, audio lectures for retention purposes, electronic flashcards, plus others. If you happen to use Jaeger, use PMF code and you will get 10% off of the best valued course. You will benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So today we're going to be looking at the general business credit. Now the general, there is no such thing as a general business credit. A general business credit, as I mentioned a minute ago, it's composed of a number of business credits. So we're going to have maybe eight or nine of them. And what we do, we can bind them into one and that's called the general business credit. So that's what it is. Now the general business credit is limited. It's limited to what? It's limited to net income tax reduced by the greater of. So we're going to look at our net income tax and we're going to reduce by the greater of the tentative minimum tax. And this is what we're talking about is the alternative minimum tax. And this number is going to be given to us. This number will be given to you, the alternative minimum tax, or 25% of the net regular tax liability that exceed 25,000. Well, basically we're comparing two numbers. Let's look at an exercise to see how this works. Alicia's general business credit for the current year is 70,000. Her net, net income tax is 50,000, 150,000, and the tentative minimum tax is 130. So the tentative, mi tentative minimum tax is 130, okay? And her income tax is 150. So her net regular income tax liability is 150 minus 25, multiply by 25%. So we have to choose the greater between this number and this number, one, 130, or the net regular tax liability minus 25,000, multiply that figure by 25%. Okay, so, so our net income tax is 150 minus the greater of 130, or 150 minus 25 multiplied by 25%, 3125, 30, 31,250. Obviously, 130,000 is the greater of 1 and 2. So therefore, 150 minus 130 equal to 20,000. Now, remember, we have $70,000 of credit. We are only going to be using 20,000 for this year. What's going to happen? We're going to have a carryover of 50,000. Alicia now holds a 50,000 of unused general tax credit that may be carried back or carried forward to other tax years. So we can carry it back one year and we can carry it forward to 20 years. So we don't lose this business credit. We can carry it for the next 20 years. If we happen to go back and amend the return of the prior year, we can do so. Now, when we carry back, I'm sorry, when we, yes, when we use, when we use any carry forward, we utilizing using FIFO. A FIFO method is applied to the carry back carry over and the utilization of credit earned during the tax year. And you will see what we mean by FIFO. First and first out, we're going to be use the first credit first, this way they don't expire. By using the oldest, which is the first one credit first, the FIFO method minimizes the potential of loss of the general business credit 
benefit due to the expiration of the credit carryover. So using FIFO, it's going to reduce the chance of you losing the credits, losing the credits. And we'll work an example just to show you how LIFO works. Let's just work a couple examples because I know um, this is a fairly uh, not a common topic for accounting students. So we'll work a couple examples just to make sure you are comfortable with this. Okay. So Carlson, uh, general business credit for the current year is 84,000. His net income, his net income tax is 190. So his net income tax is, this is 190. Okay, now we're going to be reducing this by that general business credit. The, the tentative minimum tax, I'm just going to put alternative minimum tax equal to 175. And the net regular tax liability is 185. So we're going to do, we're going to do is we're going to get the 185,000, reduce it by 25,000 and multiply that, this figure by 25% because we're going to take the lesser of the AMT I'm going to call this the tentative minimum tax. I'm just going to call it AMT for short and between those two. So let's go ahead and perform the computation. 185 minus 25,000 times 0.25, that's 40,000. So between 40,000 and 175,000, clearly 175 is the greater. So we're going to take 190 minus 175,000 what we're going to be left with is, uh, what we're going to be amount of the credit allowed is 15,000 whoops amount of the credit allowed is 15,000 remember we have 84,000 of those credit we used 15 we used 15 therefore 84 minus 15 what's going to keep us it's going to keep us with 69,000 of this credit that we can go back one year or we can go forward third, uh, 10 years, 10 years. Let's take a look at another example. We have Adlin generated a tentative general business tax credit of 42,000 for the current year. Her regular net, her net regular tax liability before the general business credit is 107. So that's 107 is the uh, liability, tax liability, regular tax liability. Um, her tentative minimum tax is 88,000. Okay. And what's going to happen now? We're going to take her tax liability min uh, minus the 25,000, then multiply it by 25% to find the greater of these two. So if we take 107 minus 25, multiply it by 25%. So if we do this computation, we're going to come up with a number around. 20,000 or 20,500. So the alternate, the tentative minimum tax is 88. The other computation is 22,500. The greater is 88,000. Therefore, 107 minus 88,000, we can use $19,000 of our, of our tax liability, of our general business credit. We could use 42, of the 42, we could use 19, and what's left is carried over. Let's take a look at this example. You remember about carry back and carry forward. So this is an example that would illustrate this concept. O Corporation holds the following general business credit carryover. So they have some carryover from 2014, 2015, 2016, and 2017, a total carryover of 45,000. If Oak general business tax credit generated by 2018 activities equal to 36,000, so they ha we have another 36,000, so for 2018, that's another 36,000. And the total credit allowed during the current year is 60,000. Now we could use up 60,000. What amount of the current general business credit and carryover are utilized against the 2018 income tax liability? Well, how are we going to use the 60,000? Guess what? We're going to start with FIFO. We're going to start using FIFO using the oldest credit first. Therefore, what's going to happen? We're going to use the 2014, the $5,000. The 2015, $15,000. The 2016, $6,000. And the 2017, $19,000. And that's going to all amount to 45000 Guess what? We have 60000 So that's, gonna not, that's not going to be enough. Now we're going to be using the 2018. And from the 2018, we have 36000 We're going to be using out of this amount 
an additional 15,000. Okay, so 36 minus 15, what we're left with is 21,000. So the carry, so basically the carried forward now is 21,000 from 2018. Okay, so what we did is we used up all of those and we used up 15,000 from the 2018, 15,000 from the 2018. So what's left is now, now if we look at their schedule next year, the, the total carryover, so if we're looking at next year, the total carryover is 2018, 21,000. Uh, 21, now we're gonna start to look at the first of those general business credit. We're gonna be looking at the rehabilitation credit or rehabilitation expenditure credit. Now, the reason I chose those two credits because I happen to, work for a client that he had those two credits at the same time in the same year. So the first one is gonna call this credit rehab credit, just kind of for short. So what is this credit? This credit is designed to give you 20% of expenditure made to substantially rehab a certified historic structure. So if you own a historic structure in a downtown in a city, what's gonna happen? The government said, you spend some money on that and you make this um, uh, historical structure looks better, we're going to give you 20%, okay? Prior to 2018, a 10% credit was allowed for the non-certified structure originally placed into service before 1936. This was repealed by the Tax Cuts and Jobs Acts of 2017, okay? So before it was non-certified, now it has to be um, a certified historic structure, okay? This credit is taken Gradably over five year period, starting with the year the rehab the re, you rehab the building is placed in service. The rehab building is placed in service. Now you have to understand that the basis and the structure must be reduced by the full amount. So whatever by the full credit. So when you get the credit, let's assume you have a building that's worth just a million, and they gave you and you happen to uh, to have credit of one hundred thousand your basis in that building goes down to 900,000. So your basis in the building will be reduced by the amount of the credit, okay? Why? Because you need to recapture that credit when you sell that building, okay? To qualify for the credit, building must be substantially rehabilitated, meaning qualified rehab expenditure exceed the grade drop. So what do they see? What do they mean substantially? The adjusted basis of the property before the rehab expenditure, so it has to exceed that, or $5,000. Not, not bad, not, not very uh, difficult to, uh, uh, to meet. Qualify rehab expenditure do not include the cost of the building and the related facilities or cost of enlarging existing buildings. So there are special expenditure that you have to be aware of. Let's take a look at an example to see how this works. Juan spent $100,000 to rehab a certified historic structure. The adjusted basis was 40,000. He spent 100,000, 20%, the credit is 20,000. The credit is claimed equally over four year period. So what's gonna happen is over five I'm sorry, five year period, twenty thousand divided by five. So you could you would claim four thousand per credit. Juan increases the basis in the building. The Juan then increased the basis of the building by eighty thousand, one hundred thousand minus the twenty thousand credit allowed. Okay. Because why why eighty thousand? Because he spent eighty he spent one hundred thousand. What what happened if when he spent one hundred thousand your basis go up by one hundred thousand, but since you get a credit, you would reduce your one hundred thousand by twenty, so you would increase your basis by a net of by a net of uh, eight thousand, by a net of eight thousand. Okay. Let's take a look at an example. Emily here. Um, spent 135000 to, re to rehab a certified historic building, the adjusted basis 190000 that originally has been placed in service in 1935, which is before 1936. Compute Emily's credit. Well, what's the credit? It's 135000 times 20%, and that should equal to 27,000. Now bear in mind this this 27,000 will be taken over a period of I believe 5 5 years. So what's going to happen? It will be taken up over a period of a period of 5 years. 5 years. Okay? And you'll divide this by 5. But remember you also have to reduce if you if you spend 135 
on a building, your basis will go up by 135, then your basis will go down by 27. So your net basis is the difference, the net increase in your basis. Work opportunity tax credit. As I was telling you, the person that owned some couple historical building in a downtown, he also had a good connection with the warden, the prison warden in the county. So, so uh, because of that, he also had access to um, ex-felons, basically people who are in jail. And the work opportunity credit will, um, uh, you will get that credit if you hire ex-felon, high risk youth, um, a tar targeted group. So that's why that individuals happen to own those historic buildings and happen to have a good connection with the warden in which he kind of get get him connected with ex-felons. But uh, that's that. <laughs> we'll keep on. So it applies to the first 12 month of wages paid to individual falling within a target group. So when you hire any individual from this target group, which we're going to talk about in a moment, the first year you hire them, when you pay them money, when you pay them up to $6,000 of wages, you can get, as long as they work um, more than 400 hours, you will get 40%. If they work, if they work, uh, at least 120 of service, 120, but less than 400, you will get a credit of 25%. Remember, only the first $6,000 of wages, okay? So you could be paying them $20,000 a year, but you will get credit for the first 6,000. How much will you get credit depending if they work at least 400 or at least 125, okay? Now, deduction for wages is reduced by the credit amount. So whatever credit you get, you're gonna reduce your wages by that amount. Okay, targeted individuals subject to the high rate of unemployment include ex qualified ex felons because it's why what's what's the reason behind this work opportunity tax credit is to encourage uh, businesses to hire target groups like the qualified ex felon. Nobody wants to hire them, so what the government said if you do hire them, you'll get a tax credit. High risk youth, food stamp recipient, veterans, summer youth employees and long-term family assistant recipient. Those are the target group. So let's take a look at a few examples to crunch in some numbers to see how this works. In January, Green Company hires four individuals who are certified to be member of a qualified target group. Now, how do you know they are qualified of a target group? When you hire individuals, you give those forms they fill out. And they, if they fill out this form, and you'll ask them, if, you know, if they choose to say so, then they are considered qualified uh, qualified target group. Each employee works 800 hours, so they fall under the 40% because they work more than 400 and is paid wages of 8,000. It doesn't matter if they were paid, paid 8,000, the maximum is 6,000. Green company work opportunity credit is 6,000 times 40% for each individual times four employees. Therefore, the work opportunity tax credit is 9,600. If the tax credit is taken, Green must decide it must reduce it's reduction for wages paid by 9,600. Therefore, their wages is reduced by 9,600. No credit is, is available for wages paid to this employee after the first year. So that credit you only get the first year and the first year only, okay? Let's take a look at another example. On June 1st, Maria, a, cal a calendar year taxpayer hires Joe, a certified member of a target group. During the last seven months of 2018, Joe is paid 3,500 for 500 hours of work. Maria is allowed credit of, because more than 400, which is the credit will be 40%, 3,500 times 40%, which is 1,400 for 2018. Joe continues to work for Maria throughout 2019 and is paid 7,000. Now remember, the maximum is 6,000. Okay, Joe only worked 3,500 2018. Because up to 6,000 of the first year wages are eligible for the credit, Maria is allowed 40% of the remainder, which is the 6,000 minus 3,000, uh, 6,000 minus 3,500, which is 2,500 times 40% for 2019. But after that, that's it, no more credit, okay? Uh, Joe continued to work for Maria for five more years. None of Joe wages paid will, will, be, will make Maria get a credit for that. Okay, let's take a look at an example. During 2018, Lincoln Company hires seven individuals who are certified to be members of a qualified target group. Each employee work in excess of 600, therefore they're gonna get the 40%, and is paid wages of 7,500. Well, well, they were paid 7,500, well, the maximum is 6,000. 
we're going to take 6,000 times 40%, and that's going to be times how many employees? Seven employees. So that's going to be all in all 16,800. Remember, you have to reduce your wages by this amount if you happen to take this credit. Green Corporation. Green Corporation hires hire six individuals on January on January 4th 2015 all of whom qualify for work opportunity credit okay three of these individual three of these individuals receive 8500 and each individual more than 4000 uh, not 400 hours during the year the other three individual each work uh 300 hours and receive wages of 5000 okay calculate the amount of green work opportunity credit okay um, the obviously the 400 hours they're going to be receiving this is they're subject to 40 percent and those are sub subject to 25 percent okay so because they work more than 25 but less than 400 so what's going to happen is this so three employees three employees um, times six thousand dollar times 40 percent and three employees will be six thousand. Uh, no, they didn't work. They earned five thousand. Five thousand dollar times twenty five percent. Okay, so this is seven thousand two hundred, and this is. Uh, let me just make sure. This is five thousand, not five. I meant to put five k. So three individuals. 5,000 times 25% times three employees. That's equal to 37.50. I'm doing the computation on the side. 10,950. So the total credit is 10,950. If Green pays total wages of 140,000 to its employee during the year, how much of this amount can Green deduct? Well, what's going to happen is we're going to take the 140 and we're going to re be reducing the wages by the amount of the credit. Remember, the credit is better than the deduction, okay? And we talked about this. Therefore, the wage deduction is $129,050. We are happy to do so because we'll, we want to get the credit. The credit is worth more, or at least we'll get dollar for dollar if we qualify for it. Well, um, the next topic we're going to cover is more of this general business credit and specifically research activities. Now, if you're studying for your CPA, make sure you are familiar with this topic. I'm not sure how much it's involved, but you you need to know everything basically. Now, if you happen to need if you happen to need more lectures, please visit my website. If you happen to do so, please consider donating.